How could a skinny, tuberculosis-infected dentist from Griffin, Georgia, become one of the most feared and misunderstood characters in the West? Is it really true that he killed 25 men as a gambling gunfighter? And is there any real way to know if he really shot all the outlaws at least once during the famous shootout at the OK Corral? The sole undisputed fact is the wild, wild west would not have been as wild without Doc Holliday. Stormy as were the early days of Tombstone, nothing ever did occur equal to the event of yesterday. Doc was born in Griffin, Georgia, August 14th, 1851. In 1870, he went to uh, the Pennsylvania School of Dentistry, graduated in 72, became a dentist, practiced in Atlanta a while, and then unfortunately found that he had tuberculosis, and the doctors advised him to move west for his health. So he left Atlanta and ventured out to Texas. He practiced his trade of dentistry for a while once he went out west, but that slowly went away because he was much better at, at cards and could make more money. And he found there was more gold on the gambling tables than there was in people's mouth. <laughs> so he, he turned into a night person. Doc Holliday would stay up but for days drinking and gambling. He knew time was short for him. Doc felt like sleep was a waste of time. Because when you're sleeping, then he couldn't gamble, and he couldn't drink, and he couldn't smoke. And that's the things that he liked best in life, I think. And as short as he knew it was going to be, he wanted to live an interesting life. <laughs> I think Doc drank to ease both the physical pain and mental pain from knowing his condition. His enormous capacity for alcohol was amazing. He was known to drink two quarts and not show any signs of intoxication. Doc was a very compassionate person when he was sober. When drinking, he could become very ruthless. He didn't have a lot of friends, but the ones he had, he'd do anything for. And yet, if you weren't his friend, he didn't much care what happened to you and made that quite apparent to anyone that engaged him. During the early years in Texas, he was charged with assault on several occasions. Bat Masterson once said that uh, Doc Holliday didn't have very many redeeming qualities, but one of them was that he was afraid of nothing on earth. Doc Holliday knew down deep that he was going to die, and that's why he was not afraid of anything. He felt like that it would be better off for him to die by the gun than in a bed, being sick for day and day and night. Masterson made a comment one time that a 14-year-old boy could whip Doc Holliday in a fair fight. I believe that Doc could only stand up for himself with the help of a gun. He was frail, and the gun was his only way of defending himself. Wyatt Earp, he made the statement that Doc was the most skillful gambler, the nerviest, speediest, deadliest man I ever saw with a handgun. I think he got that playing cards. Even though he was weak, he still, every day, he exercised those hands, and that was that's the advantage he had over most other people. He met Wyatt in 1877 in Fort Griffin, Texas. And the story is that Wyatt was backed against the wall by some rowdy cowboys. He was standing there without a gun, and they had theirs, and they got the draw on him, and Doc came out of the saloon, he killed one of them, and the rest of them scattered and saved his life. Wyatt Earp stated once about Doc, he said, I am a friend of Doc Holliday because he came to my rescue and saved my life when I was surrounded by desperados. Their paths crossed several times, and, and they did wind up in Tombstone, Arizona together. When Doc shows up in Tombstone, Tombstone's a wide open boom town. They had liquor, they had gambling, uh, they had prostitution, and so it was all rampant and free. So, you know, I may have ventured there myself at that time. The fact that the Earps are the law in Tombstone just made it that much better for Doc. Basically, the first thing that Virgil does is he issues an ordinance to stop all guns, period, in town. And this did not sit right with a lot of people. The cowboy faction was just 
another a group of people that were there before the law actually showed up. Before the herbs came to town, the gambling games were all set up to where uh, the miners would come into town, lose all their money. Cowboys would come in and have, do whatever they please. They, they'd cheat them and take their money. Uh, they'd ride up and downtown, shoot their guns off. They didn't care where they were aiming them. Uh, the children were in the streets. They needed somebody like the Earps. They needed protection. The cowboys just uh, weren't going to let that small band just push them around and intimidate them. They would come into town and just, you know, just, just to see how far they could push the situation. Ike Clinton had gotten drunk. He walked around town all day long with his guns, and he got his brother Billy, also uh, Tom McClory, Frank McClory. He got them all fired up. They just went around town telling everybody they were going to kill the Earps and Doc Holliday and rid the town of them. Morgan was a deputized town marshal under Virgil Earp. And for this gunfight, his brother Wyatt and Doc Holliday, they were temporarily assigned as deputy marshals. The Earps, Doc Holliday, are going to the corral. They were going to disarm those people and maybe knock somebody in the head and put them in jail. Nobody thought there was going to be a fight, but it's one of those deals where one thing led to another, and once the shot was fired, there was no backing out. Boys, throw up your hands. We want your guns. The witness to the shootout, R.F. Coleman, said about it that Doc Holliday was as calm as if at target practice and fired rapidly. I've heard that Doc actually was whistling. Doc Holliday shot at everybody at the OK Corral at least once. Whether he hit everybody at the OK Corral is open to conjecture. The Earps all survived. All, of, all were wounded, including Doc Holliday, except Wyatt. He was the only one who was not wounded. Ike Clanton, the big mouth who had got it just all started, is the only one from the Clanton faction who survived the actual gunfight. He ran away. The gunfight. Uh, was very important in the lives of, of Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp, the rest of the Earps too, and for that matter, the rest of the Cowboys, the outlaws. The gunfight caused a chain of events. The first one being the vendetta of the Cowboys against the, the Earps, because three of theirs were killed. So in turn, they killed Morgan and uh, wounded Virgil for life. He was disabled for the rest of his life. While playing pool, Morgan was shot through the window was ambushed and murdered. Doc rode with Wyatt after Morgan's murder, and they hunted down every person that they believed to be responsible and supposedly shot some really in cold blood. Holiday had a big reputation as a fighter. This probably put more rustlers and cowboys under the sod than any one man in the West. He has been the terror of the lawless element in Arizona, and with the arms was the only man brave enough to face the bloodthirsty crowd, which has made the name of Arizona a stench in the nostrils of decent men. Doc was dying, and he was getting worse and worse and worse hell, and so he went to Colorado. Went to Glenwood Springs, Colorado where he spent some time and ended up dying there in the, in the hotel in Glenwood Springs. Doc was in and out of consciousness the entire 50 days. Uh, he did wake up, asked for a drink of whiskey, took it, drink of whiskey. and passed away. His last words were, this is funny. I think he really believed that he would never have died in bed. He always thought that he would be killed in a gunfight, but it just won his time. Doc Holliday had his faults, none will attempt to deny. But who among us had not? And who shall be the judge of these things?